hello friends, subscribers, and visitors. I have uh, some news, I guess. Just, well, maybe it's not really news, but a couple years ago, in 2018, I had knee replacements on both knees. And the years up to that got where I couldn't walk without having the use of an aid. I was literally on a cane because I couldn't walk. Now, I got that done. And 2019, the land that we have traditionally hunted, the brothers and I have traditionally hunted, got clear cut which of course tore up all the uh, habitat and because it's clear cut all the stands had to come out now i do have a little piece of land myself and except for every corner and perimeter of my property has been hunted over and has stands on it and trail cams looking over the uh, property line which is quite irritating i hadn't been hunting that on my own property because it's really not big enough for more than one person so we just go where the family went we all hunted together now we pulled all the stands out actually i had help pulling the stands out not being quite in shape at that time to do it and most of the stands were short ladder stands very lightweight i could get them up and down uh two years after the surgery i could pretty well much get them and handle them however i had one big stand uh, which my brother talked me into buying because he thought it was great after i bought one and had trouble getting it up uh, he explains to me that they're a booger getting up, uh, putting a stand of that size up. It's about like trying to raise a two-man ladder stand with that extra top-heavy weight. They're very cumbersome to do. This one happened to be tall and was not particularly well made. It was a 21-footer, I think, sportsman guide where I got it, where he got his. And after I bought mine, he confessed that, that uh, maybe that was as tall as he ever needed to go. And I can see why, because they're just they're just almost unmanageable. At the time I went to put mine in, uh, neither brother was available. It was what we call youth hunt weekend in Tennessee, where there is no hunting anyway. So you might as well put a stand up or whatever, but they weren't able to help me. At that time, I was still in fairly good shape and was able to get this stand up. Uh, although it's about a three-man job, one person, because I had a winch, I had proper tools and the way I did it was find a nice tall ash tree of sufficient size it's a slick bark tree climbed up the tree with a string on a way so that I knew when I was 24 feet up off the ground high enough and I took literally one of the two climbers the old climber the bottom of the old climber and used it as a uh, um, I don't know what's the word we use as, as a jib as a, well, that's not the right word I'm thinking for. The the as a as a derrick perhaps as as a leverage as something to hang off the tree to put the uh, uh, winch pulley on and literally winched it up the tree with the strap on and it was a quite cumbersome wasn't the, it wasn't easy to do and I was in pretty pretty good shape when I put it up and I was able to use the remote I would have to have the strap keep it from sliding off either side of the tree it would be slack and then i would i would i would raise the strap up high and then as the the stand came up above it it would bind i'd have to climb back up the stand lift it up lift that strap the next bite kind of like doing a lineman's belt climbing on up and being suspended directly from the cable off of the winch off the four-wheeler i was able to literally lift it up put a section in pin it lift it up some more, put another pin in it, and go on up with the whole section and tie it off. And, and the good part about it was, although it was extremely cumbersome and slow, the strap was on it, although it wasn't tight, when it was fully in place. And I was able to just sneak on up to the top and then tighten that, that top uh, ratchet strap down. And it was a, simply a way of avoiding all the, the, the bottom of the stand of feet coming out of it and sliding to the left or the right of the tree and that sort of thing. Uh, just using simple mechanics, using simple mechanics of the tools I had available with not having help. Uh, because, again, they weren't available. They'd be happy to help me at some point in time, but I could never seem to get them uh, scheduled to do so. Uh, they always had plans, so... And they're deer hunters too, so they seem to be there to help each other out. But I couldn't, I couldn't get the the help I needed when I needed it, which was I, okay, I guess. But uh, again, 
with tools doing all the heavy lifting, I was able to do it. Now this stand is not what I would call the best quality stand, Chinese made, obviously. The, it's a dual tube with um, the uh, a small little three quarter inch square box tubing in between them to make it give extra stiffness because it is so tall. In that regard, it's a pretty good, it was a pretty good stand, but it's heavy as a devil. It's like almost a hundred pounds dead weight and that is without being in the lifting up type of form that you normally do when we when you erect a ladder stand so again i just i just strapped the top section loose and then built it up underneath it vertically on the tree that i had now when it came down going up is easier than coming down and when we took it down we just cut it and the, the two brothers helped and we got the stand down without damage now before i put this stand back in these years after surgery i wasn't sure if i could actually even use a climber but that's what i had that's the way i put it up before so this time i tried a little different method and i'm going to show you a couple of short cell phone clips of how i did that and it may work for you it's still a little bit um tightening of, of the sphincters as it goes up because you, you're not sure if you're going to have a disaster and, and lose a, a $200 stand. But <clears throat> found a, an, a tree that was appropriate that didn't have the, the disease or death or anything like that going in a tree not of sufficient size at the bottom of the hill where I had deep rooted uh, soil and I believe it's in good shape. It wasn't an ash, it was an oak. So the bark is a little less slick to slide up and um, I did basically a lean-to using a winch and I'll show you a little bit of how to do this how I did it and again I'm not I'm not capable of doing a lot of the stuff I, I wish I could do like I used to be able to do back in the good old days but it was it was a method but before I tried it I thought I would try uh, a lean up method using a winch to do the pulling and I'll show you how that's done. I don't have everything on video simply because uh, as, it got, as it started to raise up I used the ropes around the tree to keep it from sliding off of the tree in case it decided to go wonky and tied them through the, the smooth parts of the um, racks on the four-wheeler and was able to hold tension while I worked the, the winch. And, and surprisingly so, I couldn't find my, my winch extension, which would give me a little bit more range of motion to the left or right as, as would need to to kind of hold it, uh, because I couldn't find it. After I got it all done, came back to the house, looked all over for it, couldn't find it anywhere. I did, however, eventually find it in uh, the rear box on the four-wheeler. It was neatly tucked away. I keep a little box on the front corner where I put cell phones and things in case it needs to rain, in case it starts to rain or keys or something like that. And I might want to keep dry remote controls and that that's good. But there, but with that cable in with that extension on it, it takes up a lot of room and I moved it in a safe space. I just could remember where I moved it to. And in fact, I found it in the uh, rear box under the back rack, your toilet paper box, if you will. And it and this this worked pretty well. Now there's a section I'll have to talk about it as I go up because there's some things that might be interesting to you if you're in a similar situation or if you're like me, old and infirmed, or if your buddies are old and infirmed as well, um, except for physically not being walked so great and not be able to climb so good and never be able to get down, never squatting or getting on my knees. It really cuts your range of motion, and when you when your range of motion is moved. Your, your confidence really goes away. So making up for what I lack in physical dexterity and capability, I have tools and I did use those. So we're going to get into that section and I'll show you how it went up and I'll give you some, some hints, uh, some things the way I do it. I'm not suggesting you do, you do this this way, uh, but it's, it's, it's the way I did it. And um, it's just there for your, look for your 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 visual entertainment okay now i have this little bit of cell phone video queued up and if you knew if you're new to deer hunting from a ladder stand getting them up 
is and down can be can be a real pain in the butt now what's nice about them is once you get them in there you can walk right in there with your pack and you're going and and not have much weight to do on game day the downside with this particular one is it is extremely heavy it's about like trying to lift a two-man ladder stand where they're extremely top heavy and even though the ladder sections may not be particularly heavy it's just too cumbersome for a single person to do unless it's like a 10 12 footer single tube job in which case they're just super light and they go up but the more top heavy they are the more they want to do a teeter-totter on you you know where the top end is where the fat boy sits and so the leverage the pivot point the balance point is way offset where you've got that you've got so much weight on the top and the bottom here tends to want to lift on you and normally to put a stand up it's at least a two-man job or possibly a three-man job in the case of this because quite honestly you need one man on each side of the of the tree with the ropes because we tie the ropes to the top part where the where the ratchet straps go and then we we use those to brace the to brace the, the stand when it's in place. That's the standard thing. The downside to that is if it's a really big stand, you need typically one man on the other side of the stand holding the ropes to make sure that, that the stand doesn't fall off this side or that side as it goes up because it's all done by visual inspection. You know, it, you try to find a good straight tree and do it. Now, this, this one is about 90 pounds dead weight. It's a two tube, it's 18 foot, it's a monster. And I bought this because my brother talked me into it. He had one and it just talked about how it was the greatest thing of all time. So I went ahead and bought one, only to find out how difficult it was to erect. And I wanted to put it up on what we have in Tennessee is called the Youth Hunt Weekend because we're all old guys. Every one of us is old guy that happened to be the youngest one. And we can't hunt on those weekends, so it would be a good time to put a stand up, but I couldn't get any help. So the first time I put it in, I put it in alone. It was before my knee surgery, and I was in pretty good shape back in those days for, for my age. Pretty good shape. I mean, I still have little white spots growing on the spine and compressing disc and some sciatic and some other stuff that just comes around with having sufficiently avoided death before this age I got by with it with a little bit of effort now the first time I put one in I could I tried to lift it and I could not lift it I could not I could not raise it I could not manage it by myself so I devised a way to get it up and what I did is I I picked a nice vertical tree I like using cedar trees to back up against because it gives me a little bit of um, a backdrop uh, to, to kind of hide myself against uh, but I wasn't able to do it by myself with a cedar tree. The only way I've gotten to do a cedar tree is I will take a, a stand and I will whack off the bottom uh, limbs on the side it's going up, leave the back ones to catch it in case it falls left or right, and I'll go up so far, saw off or cut off, machete off the limbs, and then put another section on it, lean it back up against the tree, go on up knock some more limbs off until i can get it and that works pretty good with a short light stand where you can maneuver it fairly easily one person this one's too big to do that so i have to use a limbless tree that's limbless for at least 20 foot 21 foot so the first time i put it in i used a climber and a half and you might think what is a climber and a half well i used a, a climber with a with a with a string attached to it at, at 21 feet 22 feet 24 feet something like that and then i climbed up the tree lashed into the tree with a harness you can even put your climbing your safety rope up the top while you're there with your tree climbing stand and then at the the bottom was the bottom half of another climber and i brought it up tied it in uh, above above me and below the rope and the safety and with that I hook the pulley to the winch on it and drop the winch down and what I would do is I took the stand and I put a strap on it and I just set it up vertically against the tree one section may have been two sections I think probably just one section and I lifted it straight up the tree with that back strap on there now the problem with this was is 
it was it while it's safe to do that way it made a lot of climbing up and down that tree because i leaned up against the tree with that back strap on it i had to have it loose and it would hang down so i'd have to raise it up as high as i could get it to go and kind of get it to hang somewhere on the bark and then winch it up and as it would winch up the strap would effectively pass below where the top of the stand was and it would bind and I had to climb up there and I had to lift that strap back up hang it up above it and pull it again and I could do that with a remote using one climber for a certain amount of space and it was a lot of up and down the tree to do that now the good part of it was that once I got that that final section put in once I got finally got that last section put in, I already had a strap around the tree, so it, if it fell, it couldn't fall far because there wasn't that much slack on on you know it was just enough so that it so that it could get up and it would I'd kind of use it like a like a lineman strap you know you'd get up there and you'd you'd climb up so far and you'd throw the strap up top and you'd take a few more steps and then throw it up you know above it and then cl and climb on up. And it worked okay because as it as the winch had the full weight of the stand lifting vertically, I'd lift it up until I had enough room to get that to get that next section in there, put it in there, and pin it. But this is a sportsman guide, if I remember right, stand, 18 foot stand, no, 21 foot stand. And the problem with it is, is when I had it in the field, I'd realize it was poorly made. These two tubes on one section were not at the right length. They were square. They were flat at the bottom with the holes but on the top where it was where it's compressed down swage down so it fits inside the tube one of the holes was not in the right spot and the two swagings didn't end at the same spot on one side and so it was off just a little bit and I ended up having to take a, a drill motor out there on the second on a separate day and drill a pinhole in it to where I could get that pin to go in because the two tubes were not the right length. Both of them were not the same length, and one of them was not swaged enough, so it was too far up into the other, up into the other stand where the hole was. If it makes sense, it just wasn't. It's just you know a Chinese stand, but I got by with it, and that's the first time I figured out how to do how to use a green strap. I used a regular one-inch strap on that when it went up to hold it together as it lifted and then once I got it in place gravity did its work and kept it down on you kept it together now I had two older little cheap 12 foot stands I bought from somewhere um, super light single tube and they have no top on them they just have a little flat platform no shooting rail or anything so they're not very top heavy I can manage them myself but they did have the tendency when you when you try to lift it pull them together to want to come apart so I learned that I can take a strap and run it through the ladder and pull all the sections together so they can't separate. The newer stands now seem to all have pins in them where they, they're pinned together so they won't come apart. So anyway, before I roll this film, I want to say what I did in this case. The standard erection process is you put one man with the ropes, one on each side of the tree so it can't slide off left or right you know, in case it starts to go wonky. And you normally put a man on the backside on the, the the stand part. He lifts it up and it just you just pivot up into place. You right up against the tree, and that works pretty good unless they're like a two man stand or extremely long because then they do the uh, fat boy, little boy on the teeter totter. You end up with way so so much weight on the one end. As soon as you walk a few rungs into it, this side wants to pop up on you. And so that's where your third man sometimes comes in. He has to kind of step down or put some pressure across this rung or this edge, something to, just to kind of keep it from ever coming up. Now, before I started, I dug two little holes for these feet to start going into. And as you can see, I've got that two by four at a little bit of an angle. And these guys, which I have a little video at the end, I'll put it in there. These are just concrete form nails. Uh, and they're pretty long and I drove them down in the ground where they felt nice and stiff and then drove a nail in it so that the wood couldn't kick out it couldn't raise up with the the, the stand couldn't raise the two by four up you know you know if it binds right here at that sharp spot it would keep it in case the stand wanted to lift up it couldn't just slide up off the nail so they, they have holes in them and I just nailed it nailed the basin I'm also using 
the winch to do all the work. So I'm not really having to do anything physically strenuous. Just use this coil. And I'll show you a little picture of the plan in, in, in the future. Now I did have plan B after this, if this did not work and I didn't destroy the stand in the process of trying to get it up, I did have a climber and I was going to try to repeat that which I did the first time. Although I don't know if I can actually use a climber. I haven't used, been able to use a climber for about five years, five, six years. I couldn't do it before surgery. The knees got too bad. And now that they're replaced, I don't know if I want to cl try to climb a tree with a climbing stand with the legs being in the condition they are. So that's why I decided to try this first. Do we have a good clear picture of it? If we do, I'm going to come over here and we'll go ahead and roll the video. Okay, I don't know if this is going to work because I can't find my extension. 21 foot is heavy. Uh, and, and the extension, <coughs> my, my, th this last winch I put in some years ago, it actually has an, a remote extension cable of so many feet. And that was helpful too, except I, it, I usually would keep it in my green ammo box that I have on the front as like a little baby trunk for self keep my cell phone dry and the charger in case i'm in the woods and it gets lost or that kind of stuff i get lost rather and i have to i have to charge my phone or something or maybe i'm just being a numpty and i forgot to charge my phone or something like that i can i can dry it keep dr charge it while in the dry that kind of thing keep my wallet and other stuff close by in the dry in the four-wheeler and i couldn't find my the little, the little wired extension so I did find the wire extension after it was all done. I went back to the house, looked all through the garage and all through the cabinets, and I could not find it anywhere because I had taken it out of that green box and put it somewhere to be safe so I'd have more room for, you know, tools or whatever I might need, the cell phone, have some room in there, that sort of thing, flagging tape, just the stuff you have when you go out to the woods. And after it was done, I found it. It was in the... Uh, the trunk box, the dry box, the toilet paper box, the rear box, the little, little square box that you have at the back end of most four wheelers. I found it in there with the can of Fix-A-Flat and stuff and the roll of toilet paper. So I did find it, but I got it up otherwise. So I'm having to work this. When I raise this, everything I'm doing is at the four wheeler on the handlebar. It's um, almost 100 pounds static, but it's less when you get the leverage on it. Now what I've done for a foot block so I've taken concrete pins, nailed them in, put a two by four across, and I'm gonna pull, see if I can pull with the winch against that tree and get it about where it needs to go. Okay, now I'm, I'm gonna be close to running out of this particular clip, but I wanna roll it back just enough to show you this little block, because there's also a, vid there's a video on the block, the foot block I made, and there's also this top block. Now what I did here, and I'll repeat this in this other segment. Right now I only have one strap, and it's a one-inch strap. I would advise making this thing out of a 2x6 or 2x8, and I'll show you how I did that, and using something like a, a 10,000-pound 2-inch uh, or 3-inch type strap and do it. Because I ended up, the first time I started to lift it, it felt like it wanted to drop down just a little bit, and I had to double strap it just to make sure it would come up. Against that tree and get it about where it needs to go. If it doesn't work, I'll take that climber that's right there in the poison ivy, climb up the tree, hook the winch, pull it, and just lift it straight on up at a vertical. Put the section under it, lift it up, put the section under it. Okay, now where I'm sitting right now is I've, I've got myself ready to lift and I started lifting just a little bit to see if the foot block is going to hold and the first thing I, I did I lifted a little bit and that's when the block on the, the little strap on the tree slipped just maybe an inch and a half two inches something like that and you can see right up here where I tied it in I went well above midway but you can still see a little bit of flexing of the stand it's still bent it's bending a little bit but I took some leftover one inch or maybe that was three quarter inch strap and there's about uh, five runs each direction on there and tied to a knot and it's pulling. And if you'll notice, I've got it just a little bit off center. 
and this wanted to make it want to tilt just started to um, made me start to fear that it was going to tilt so I lifted it up off the ground to get it taut and then I stopped uh, to get the uh, to get the cell phone shoot a little video and I, I don't have all of the video I don't have it going all the way to full full upright because when it got up a little bit higher when you see the little blurry spot at the end it's because I stopped there put the cell phone down and took these two ropes and what you see you got one on for the right side one for the left side and I pulled this one around the tree and I pulled the other one the opposite direction around the tree and used the front and back uh, luggage racks or what do you want to call it racks cargo racks on the four-wheeler the smooth part pulled a rope through it so I could just kind of keep that rope tight on each side keep it keep it from going left or right in case it decided to want to dive that way and I really couldn't hold the, I couldn't hold the phone and operate the switch and pull on those ropes all at the same time because there's really no stress it's not hard I'm not straining any kind of a muscles I'm just standing next to the four-wheeler at the handlebar putting a little bit of tension on the on the two ropes to keep it from sliding off and it went in it went in like a gym so what do you say we go ahead and hit the rest of this just in case this goes horribly wrong and that snaps Okay, this particular clip is after I got lifted up, leaning against the tree. It's not tied down. It's just fully erect. Went in like a dream. No sweat, no strain. But I had to put the phone down. So I'm sorry you didn't get the uh, other video to go with this. It just, the winch did all the work. Now, I will say this. Right after I got it up and leaning against the tree, the circuit breaker on the 1500 pound it may be 2000 1500 pound winch got hot and it clicked off and so i had to wait for it to cool down to recoil the uh, cable off the end but we'll go ahead and watch the watch this go on in just a little talk okay so i hope you'll forgive me if i didn't hold the camera while i did now in this clip this was after i got it cabled in and i don't know i, I don't remember if i got the top strap in at this point i guess maybe i did maybe i didn't but one of the things that, that i started doing several years ago was i'd come over here and in, in this screen and i run these are the the two long ropes i have tied in at the back where the ratchet strap goes so they so they, they go around they cross the tree at the back and they need to be below the horizontal brace and i've got it put in now one of the things that i do is i cross them a second time when i go near the bottom and what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to make make effort of uh, a very long and indirect pull because there's going to be a vector there's going to be a slight vector pulling towards the tree but there's also one that's pulling the back of the stand against the tree right you know how that works but i cross them underneath the stand and that makes a little x now what you can do and i'm not saying you need to do this i'm not not even suggesting this but you know how you whip a bowstring or the end of a rope where you'll take and you'll run the um you'll run a long piece of smaller cord maybe like parachute cord and then loop it back and then go around the rope like this and then pull it up around the loop and then pull the, the loop tight and it makes a little bind keeps them keeps them together well you can do the same thing with this where these ropes cross you can pull them together enough to whip it and that kind of that kind of fixes that as a point so now you have a small triangle between the base of the ladder stand and somewhere in between it and the tree where they cross now you type it now that's a that becomes 
sort of a, a two triangles, one against the tree, one against the other. And by obviously by crossing the back of the tree, instead of just going down straight, you get a little bit more friction against the bark of the tree. And that's to me, it makes me feel like it's a little more steady. Now I don't have these lashed in yet. This is a poly rope and it tends to stretch. You may want to get some kind of a, a weather proof rope or something. This, this stand came with uh, little three quarter inch straps. And when the brother took the stand down in 2018 or 19, uh, he cut the straps, cut it loose, and I haven't reordered them. I just used regular rope and tied it in. But I also then, what this you might see, this is parachute cord. Or what do you want to call, um, yeah, the parachute cord. I'm trying to think what it's called. The, and it's not a mill spec. It's supposed to be 850 pounds, and it doesn't stretch very much. It's actually, by spec, stronger than that rope and lighter. But I tie it at the base as well. I go around the edge, and I use a pressic at each to do each one of the ropes so that you can pull it tight and then slide that rope on to slide that knot on up and it, and it keeps it nice and tight so i use one, the ropes like normal people would use just a strap the bottom to a cross brace to do the mid brace and then also i add a couple extra and you might see if i can stop it in time before i try to climb up to the top I'll steady it up a couple more times. I'll even use a bonus ratchet strap to help pull it against a tree just to, just to, to give um, this old cripple guy the intestinal fortitude because I don't climb. I can only climb one rung at a time. I bring one leg up and then get on the same and go up one leg and one up. There's none of this double stuff. I can't do that anymore, but I can, do, I can go one step at a time with, with the good leg and go from there. Uh, but let's watch this video. Well, and right there, actually, you see here, you see the extra, the bonus, the bonus, the bonus strap, because you know it, it's a, it, it, if you've ever, if you've ever had to climb a stand to tie the tie the things on, free climb it, it it'll pucker you just a little bit. And there, there, those are the pressics right there on the two black ropes on the poly rope, and then you can see I'm crossing the. Uh, parachute cord at this point too and after it sets up for a while and has a chance to kind of uh, stretch a little bit I'll come back and I'll, I'll tighten each one of these lines up make sure they're good and tight and then I may lash them where they cross like right here and obviously right there it's getting late but the top is strapped in And also, you can do this if you, if you've got if you've got some uh, some cord. You can also add a couple extra. I actually have a second pair of cords tying in slightly below because you need to be on both sides of the the post. So it ties in above the the first set, which is on the bottom rung, and above the top with the first set tied in. And so it just, it just makes it it just gives it a little bit more a little bit more. Um, I think it gives a little bit more stability. Let me roll it back and we'll watch it from the beginning. Well, it's getting late, but the top is strapped in. Now here is another view from the opposite side, and, and this gives us a little bit of a view on the uh, cabling what I was talking about there. And again, again, I'm not advocating this. I'm just saying that for me personally, um, not being, not being a hundred percent, not actually be able to do, I'm not supposed to be doing what I'm doing, but I give it a try. And I usually pay for it for about two weeks after this, where I, where it takes me that long to recover from, from, from pulling this off. But you can see in this picture, Okay, here are the black ropes as we as we saw, and like I say, I go down to the base because that's like a uh, tent stake. I'm pulling far at the bottom. The brace is obviously right there. Right there is the brace. I have a strap at the top, a temporary strap at the bottom, just to help keep it keep it on there extra tight. And then here's that uh, the paracord going up. And see, I don't go all the way to the top with it because it's still a little bit wobbly at this point. But I add two, I add two more cables, two more paracords, and then before it's over, I'll come up to maybe here, and I'll 
run another one up higher, another another pair of paracords tying up further on there. And that's just to, to give you the confidence that it's not going to uh, slide off and you're there. But now, as you see the, the four-wheeler, absolutely directly underneath where that pulley was. And it was it was somewhere up in here where I could stand on the four-wheeler. I could climb up on there. A little awkward doing it, but I could get up on the four-wheeler and get it up a little bit higher on here. So I think I just let this in play. Here's another view. Top looks good and green, which is great. Because I think this is the last time I'm going to move that stand. And I think this is the last clip of the stand from, from another viewpoint. You can see the paracord crosses over. The first, the first line of paracord crosses over like this. You can see the black ones, the, the main ropes on the side, they cross over. And when we scan up the tree, you'll see a second set of paracords just, you know, when when you're not a hundred percent, when you when you're down to when when father times arthritis and they start putting parts in you, you, you don't have the, the ability to do everything you had before. You don't have the confidence to do everything you had before, and you know gravity is a bitch. A lot of people fall in this process of putting a deer stand up. Things things are the way they are uh, right now, and so hey. We put it. We, we we give it a try just to see if we can tempt fate just a little bit more. And again, I can't tell you how bad I got. I got this. <laughs> I got I got some pain in this one one ham back here where I pinched it. Where I worked that nerve, got it irritated. It'll be that way for a couple a uh, couple of weeks. But uh, uh, you know, hey. We got it. We got her strapped in. But let's watch this, and you see the, the how many cables I've got pulled across this thing. And this is the fine. This is, the, I think, the final rigging on it. Well, it's in, and I'm fixing it right out. It's on up, it's on up there. I do have to fix the cable to lock the chair up. Now I'm gonna slide this over so I can show you the that those upper the upper paracords right about there and you see the bottom if you can if you're going to truss up against a tree like this against this brace you need to have one connection below and one connection above and you see the original ones went up to here and the second set goes up a little bit higher it just it just kind of sturdies it up a little bit now I'll show you the commentary on the two um, country boyed up erection aids that I had um, for this stand. And again, I'm just using what I got available. Uh, the old body is failing, but the brain still works. If I can just <laughs> have to write everything down, you know, it's better to have a short pencil than a long memory. But I'll show you the, these other two little clips. Okay, here is my, my, my little ingenious uh, country boy modification field tool. Just a 2x4. You know what a 2x4 looks like. And this is that concrete nail, uh, form nail, whatever you want to call it. In fact, there's a little concrete still in one of the holes there, I think. And I don't really know how long it is. It may be two foot, maybe a little more than two foot. But I drove it in there where it, where it really felt like it was stiffening up because I didn't want it to pull up. And I drove it in at an angle. If we go back and if you rewind this video and you'll see it was draw, driven in at an angle so that I could catch, you know, in case that bottom of that the stand want to lift up, I've got a little bit of friction because it's at an angle, not perfectly straight. So let's uh, go ahead and watch the video. Okay, this you might recognize is a 2x4, and there's a little nail hole, and there's one on this side. Now this thing just rolled off, if you're not familiar, this is a form spike or nail, so it's got holes up and down the side of it in two different directions, so they're 90 degrees off. Just nailed the... Um, the bottom made like a little thing for the 
for the bottom of the stand to push against. That's all it was. Nailed it in there about a foot, maybe a foot and a half. I don't know. How long is that? Pretty good length. But anyway, about half of that was nailed in the ground, so it pushed up. A, so the bottom of the stand slid up to it. And I also kind of dug out uh, with a chainsaw chain adjuster, kind of dug out two little holes for the feet to fall into so they wouldn't slide. Now this is my little block. It was conceptualized based on what I had in the house and I think I already have said in one of the videos if I had a chance I would probably make this larger out of a piece of 2 by 6 or 2 by 8 I'd gone to the store and bought me a, a 2 by 2 by something bigger than this so that it'd be uh, hold up a little bit better and I'd used a better stronger strap just for belt and suspenders what I had worked but uh, as I initially lifted it off the ground, it wanted to slip a little bit, and I put a double strap on it to help hold it. And you can see in that video, it looked like it wanted to kick down just a little bit, but one of these is longer than the other, and it pooches through the back side so that it works like a spike into the tree, and I think that held up pretty good. Uh, I just would make it a little bit wider. I left it this size simply, and I used the one-inch strap simply because of this space between here and here. I wanted that, that strap to go and I rounded the edges because I don't want under extreme pressure um, a sharp edge even though it be wood to, to stress that strap any. So it was wrapped around there and I added that second strap to let it go. Now this is the block that I figured to um, raise the, the stand with. It's just 2 by 4 and if I had to do it over again, I'd get 2x6 or even 2x8 and use a heavier uh, ratchet strap, use a stronger ratchet strap. I had two on there and it lifted up okay, but it felt like it wanted to, to uh, jump just at the very first of it. And it's just, <coughs> it's just uh, some lag bolts. And I have these ones long so that when it was up in the tree, my idea was... That. Now, something I want to point out, you see this space right here. I, I, I've already taken it off, but I had about, uh, I had some more one-inch strapping webbing around this about five times in a loop, and it was tied off to it, make, a little, make a little catch at the bottom, a little loop at the bottom, and it's a little wire tie, just keep it from sliding back and forth. Didn't really do any, any real work. Uh, it, just, it just kept my strap from wanting to, to maybe migrate off the of center. But uh, that's just a little, just... It's just what I tried. It would catch on the two edges here and here. Let me just hit this out. Catch on here and here. Give a little bit of a gap in, in, in there to give me my distance off the tree. Because I had about five runs of ratchet strap excess, you know, where the, the, the webbing was cut. And just use it around there multiple times and, and just... The pulley were pretty good, but then my the idea with those being long was so that it would bite into the tree as it as it pulled. The idea is as it pulled, uh, they'd bite in like that, and they may have actually, but it was a little bit on the side diameter tree. It was a little bit where they I'm not sure they actually bit that well into the tree. They they may have, but that was just a the homemade block. And, of course, rounded off those edges so that it wouldn't, you know, cut that strap. 